Bible school shall I thank God this morning for the Word of God. Today, my mind's alert, my heart is receptive to receive the uncompromised, the unchanging, the infallible, indestructible seed of the Word of God. I am what the Word says I am. I can have what the Word says I can have. I can do what the Word says I can have. Thank God today that I can do what the Word says I can do. Amen. For my Bible is God's Word speaking to me. Now look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Bible is God's Word speaking to you. So smile real big. Be a doer of the Word, not just to hear the Word. Praise God. Wave the Word around and give two people a hug to, before you sit down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Turn your Bibles. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. We're going to pick up on the covenant. Talking about the covenant. Thank God for the covenant. As we went over to Genesis chapter 12. And God spoke to Abraham. Told him to leave the Ur Chaldees. He left. And God says in the 12th chapter that he says, I'm going to bless you, bless the nations of the world. Glory to God. He says, through your descendants, they're going to be blessed. More so than the stars of heaven. Then we get over there to the 15th chapter of Genesis, and we find out where Abraham said, Lord, how will I know this promise will come to pass? Talking about God told him, you're going to have a child. Out of your own loins. Remember, Ishmael came out of the will of God. As I said last week, the whole world is still suffering from that. That's important to understand. God will forgive you for your mistakes, but there are some things that you'll suffer from it. That's why it's important not to do or make any mistakes if it's all possible. But thank God for His grace today. I'm glad I'm living under the grace of God and the mercy of God today. Amen. Amen. And then we go to Genesis chapter 17, and he talks about Abraham circumcising. You know, he, had, he was a real man to circumcise himself. <laughs> it takes a real man to circumcise. He's fine right there where he's at. He's not going to bother nothing. Praise the Lord. He circumcised himself. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. And uh, <laughs> through circumcision. And uh, that's how they were. Uh, the covenant was taken care of through circumcision until uh, the law of Moses came along. Then they started cutting and sacrificing animal blood, cutting up animal blood. That was the law of Moses. Now, let me, let me see here. Where's my book at? My book, here it is. Let me read you a little something here. First of all, let me give you the scripture out of Hebrews chapter 7. And then verse 22 says this, By so much more, Jesus has become a surety and the word surety there in the Greek says guarantee, or the Hebrew says guarantee of a better covenant by a much more, so much more Jesus has become a surety or a guarantee of a better covenant. Aren't you thankful we're living under a better covenant today? Better promises, better covenant. Thank God for the grace that we're living under today because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came 2,000 years ago and gave his blood. He became the sacrifice to, care, to take care of all the sacrifices that they did under the old covenant or the Mosaic law. And uh, I've got a book here I've had, my oh goodness, it's probably 1970, somewhere along there, many, many years. And it's called The Blood Covenant by E.W. Kenyon. And it is a powerful, powerful book. I want to just read a little something here this morning to you out of this book. It says, when God entered into the covenant with Abraham, there were several very striking events that took place at this time. Among them was the changing of Abram and Sarah's names to Abraham, a prince of God, and Sarah, princess of God. In other words, he lifted them into the royal family before he cut the covenant with them. 
Abrahamic covenant, which is the basis of Judaism and Christianity, is the most marvelous document in existence today. It was sealed by circumcision. We talked about that a minute ago in Genesis 17 chapter, sealed by circumcision. This covenant was but this covenant bound Abraham and his descendants by uh, indissolvable ties to Jehovah, and it bound Jehovah to Abraham and his descendants by the same solemn token. Aren't you glad you are a descendant of Abraham? So when Abraham was 99 years of age, God appeared to him as Almighty God, or El Shaddai. And El Shaddai means the God that's more than enough. He's the God that's more than enough. Praise God. So we serve a God that's more than enough. Not only is he more than enough, but in obedience to his word, we have more than enough because we are children of God under the covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ today, not through the blood of animals, not through uh, what Abraham went through in circumcising and circ circumcision of himself, but you and I, because Christ himself gave his blood 2,000 years ago, under that blood, we have a covenant that cannot be broken. We have a covenant that is a guarantee. My God, a guarantee. As I've been saying the last two or three weeks, I said, you know, we have uh, you know, uh, commercials that says you, we guarantee this and guarantee that and so forth. Uh, and so they say, if you don't like it, send it back. Most people, a lot of times, they guarantee it don't work. <laughs> Some of you found that out. They, and then they say all these things. And then you, you have a hassle a lot of times with people when they want to take things back. You know, they, it's, they love to sell you things, but you just don't want to take things back. Amen. But I'm so glad through the blood of Jesus Christ, he became the guarantee. And that guarantee will never run out. As long as the earth remains, the seed, the blood of Jesus will never run out. His covenant is sealed by his own blood. We talked about Jonathan and David last week in Mephibosheth, how they went to Lodabar after uh, Jonathan and his father was killed in battle. And then David uh, uh, jo Jonathan had a son named Mephibosheth, and, and he was five years old. And then uh, uh, when he daddy died and his grandfather died, he went and hid himself. And all the years, uh, he was told that David, uh, now being king, uh, wanted to take his life, wanted to kill him, and always brought negative things to him. But then when David found out that there was a, a descendant of Jonathan, uh, he says, let me go find him. Let me go find him, praise God, hallelujah. Let me go find him, because he don't need to be in poverty. He don't need to live in a shack. He don't have to be broke no more. He don't have to live in fear any longer, praise God, hallelujah. He don't have to live in fear any longer, he said, because he's got a covenant, because his daddy and I, we cut our wrist, and we became blood brothers, and we exchanged our clothing and everything that I owned belonged to Jonathan. Everything Jonathan owns belonged to me. And now, because Jonathan is gone now, he said, I'm going to find his son, and I'm going to take care of him because he actually now belongs to me. <laughs> that's, all, that's just like Jesus saying, here's what he said. He said, you belong to me. He said, you belong to me. I'm taking you out of poverty I'm taking you out of a shack. I, I, I'm taking you out of fear. I'm taking you out of sickness and disease because you belong to me. And he says this, he's, and I guarantee it. Amen. Remember when you're praying and reading the word of God and whatever need that you may have in this life and you're looking at that word, just remember this. When you read the Bible, remember I always said this, when I read the Bible, that's God speaking to me. And now you can add to this, that's a guarantee. Amen. See, we've got to get that revelation. We've got to really see who we are. We've got to identify with the covenant, with the blood of Jesus Christ and who we are in him. Don't identify with your problems. Don't identify with your challenges of life. Don't identify with, with, with issues in life. We always need to identify with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I like those songs we sing there's power in the blood. One the work of power. We used to sing that in the Baptist church. Really didn't understand. 
But we sing it, my God, like we understood. Power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Boy, there's power in that song. Power in the blood. Now, I know a lot of church, churches don't want to sing the blood songs no more. I understand that. But we're not going to let them influence us. What's going to influence me is the Word of God. I'm going to always sing about the blood. I'm going to always talk about the blood. Oh, my, my, my. Thank God for the blood. We are to thank God for the blood. Amen. Now, when we read the Word of God, that's the blood of Jesus. And when you take that Word and you receive that Word, that's the same principle as Moses and the high priest would take every year and sprinkle the blood on all the people of Israel. Millions of it will sprinkle blood on them. Why is that? To cover their sins in the Old Covenant. But today, through the blood of Jesus Christ, the Word sprinkles us, not to cover our sins, but to take away our sins. And, and now that we have our sins taken away, praise God, that is to remind us when we hear about the Word, hear the Word, and, and, and it becomes blood Word to us. Uh, it reminds us that I've been set free. I'm free. I thank God I'm free by the blood of the Lamb of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against me, she goes. No weapon. Come against me. Where am I at here? You didn't got me preaching before. But David said, where is Jonathan? Son, I want to know where he's at. Fear probably gripped his heart because for years he was told that David was going to kill him. That's what the devil tells you all the time. He'll try to, he wants to say, I'm going to take, take, your, take you out. I'm going to take your life as a life in the pits of hell. He can't do any more than you allow him to do. Don't allow him to do nothing in your life. Because in Matthew it says, whatever you bind, Matthew 16, Matthew 18 says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth shall be loose in heaven, telling me that whatever I do down here in the name of the word, in the blood of Jesus Christ, is taken care of. It's a guarantee in heaven. Guarantee. I got a guarantee. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now, when Abraham was 99 years of age, God appeared to him as Almighty God or El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough. He said unto Abraham, Walk before me and be thou mature. Walk before me and be thou mature, and I'll make my covenant between me and you and will multiply thee exceedingly. We see Abraham on his face. God's talking with him. God tells him, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and thou shalt be the father of a multitude of nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name, thy name shall be Abraham. Shall be Abraham, prince. We're kings and priests through the blood of Jesus Christ. We'll find out. Hopefully we get to it this morning, Revelation 1, 5, and 6. We're kings and priests because of the blood of Jesus. He said, but thy name shall be called Abraham, for the father of a multitude of nations have I made you. In Genesis 15, 6, God made a promise to Abraham, and it says that Abraham believed God. It was reckoned to him or counted to him for righteousness. Glory to God. Abraham was in faith. Then the law came. Then they had obeyed the law, which took him back out of faith. But we're now back in faith because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. Thank God our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says the, this word believe, listen to this. This word believe means that Abraham made an unqualified commitment of himself and all he was or ever could be to God. The word believe here in the Hebrew means not only a loving trust, but it also means giving yourself wholly up or to be part of himself or go right into him or the unqualified committal. Glory to God. You became a new creation. Old things have passed away. We have been engrafted into Christ. We have been planted and grafted into Christ. Glory to God. And Christ now is living inside of us. And there's, he's been engrafted. I mean, 
I mean, you can't separate the child of God from God. You can't separate it. Because the power of God, the Spirit of God living on the inside of us, we've been, the word engrafted means to intermingle. You can't tell one from the other. Hallelujah. You can't tell one from the other. I've been born again, engrafted, put into Christ, put in Christ. Christ has been in, he's come into me. He lives inside of me. Hallelujah. And when God the Father sees his children, those that have been born again, he can't see the difference between you and Jesus. You look just like him. We're identical twins. I said we are identical twins because we have been engrafted into him. We look just like him. Some of you say, well, my skin looks a little different than your skin. Not in the eyes of God. Looks just like the skin of Jesus. <laughs> Woo, makes me want to shout. Makes me want to shout. Makes me want to dance. Makes me want to run. Makes me want to praise him. Makes me want to glorify him. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Abraham gave himself to God in utter abandonment of himself. On the ground of that, God said, take for me. That is, as God's substitute. An animal, slay it. And Abraham did that. This is a substitute. Then God said, my substitute has been slain. And I want you to circumcise yourself. Man, that was a real man. <laughs> we can sick a pin after finger some of us and we want to cry. <laughs> Amen. He says, circumcise your sl- yourself so that his blood will mingle with the blood of God's substance. When that was done, God and Abraham had entered into that covenant. Hallelujah. Now, if you recognize what we're talking about here, talking about the covenant, everything pretty much is done on God's part or on man's part through the obedience of God's word. They had to do something. Abraham had to circumcise himself. And then in the law of Moses, we get over there, and man had to get animals and and, and, and take it to the high priest. They'd take it and and slay those animals and, and sprinkle that blood. So man had to do something. But now we cross on over into a better covenant after Jesus went to heaven. When he died, he went to heaven. He sent back his Holy Spirit, and and he he, he came within us. He infused himself and grafted himself into you and I. So the only thing we have to do is believe. My God, he made it so easy. He simplified it so easy. Made it so simple for you and I. He says, I'm just going to make it easy for you. Just believe. Just believe. And that's where so many people have an issue with that because they, they think, well, i gotta, I got to work for it. i, I got to labor for it. Uh, uh, so forth. You don't have to labor for it. All you have to say, I believe. Believe in my heart, confess with my mouth, and I shall be saved. Believe in my heart, confess with my mouth, and I shall be. Not a maybe, not a possibility, not a hope. So I shall be saved. Amen. I'm born again because I said I was born again through the blood and obedience to God's word. Amen? amen. I said amen. amen. When God cut the covenant with Abraham, the Israelitish nation came into being as a covenant people because of this covenant. This covenant was limited to Israel the children of Abraham and had, be, and had behind and had behind it the promise, had behind the covenant, the promise, and the oath of God's word. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We got a word backing us. I said, we have the word of God backing us. I mean, not only just the Bible, the word, but we got the whole kingdom. Amen. I mean, when God's word says something, we got the whole kingdom as a guarantee. That's why he says there's nothing impossible with those that believe. Nothing is impossible. Why? We're not just dealing with religion. It's not about religion. It's about the blood. 
I said it's about the blood of Jesus Christ. Then back here in Hebrews, the seventh chapter, verse 22, and by so much more Jesus has become a surety or a guarantee of a better covenant. And then chapter 8 and verse 6 says, but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant which was established on better promises. Better promises. Amen. Now, now we go back and uh, look at Abraham's life. When God told him he was going to have a child that was 75 years of age, his wife was 65. And it was 25 years later. We talked about last week, don't get caught up into time. Don't get caught up into time. God didn't tell him when he was going to have that child. He told him he was going to have that child. Now, let's go back to Romans, the fourth chapter. With that thought in mind, Romans chapter 4, let's look at verse 13. For the promise, Romans 4, 13, for the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. He didn't come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Came through the righteousness of faith. The promise, hold your place right here, and then we look back, oh, I should have told you to stay in Hebrews for a minute. But Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, and look at verse 12, I believe it is. Yeah. Hebrews 6, 12 says that you do not become sluggish or lazy. Don't become lazy, haphazardly, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Inherit the promises of God. How? Through faith. The promise that God says everything we receive from God is by faith. Romans, uh, I mean, Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. As long as you see things, you don't need faith to get what you're believing God for. But we stand on the Word of God and believe in the Word of God, that all comes by faith. And we go back over here to Romans chapter 4, verse 13 again. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Hallelujah. Now, let me read on out through here. I was going to go somewhere else. I just felt like the Holy Spirit said, just go ahead and take care of this here first. Verse 14, for if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise is, has no effect to it. Because the law brings about wrath. But where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to the grace that the promise might be sure or certain or a guarantee. God, through Jesus Christ, was establishing a guarantee. In other words, it's a guarantee. It's a done deal. I mean, it's, it's sealed with the, his own blood. With his own blood, he sealed that. Amen. And he says here in verse 16 again there, he says, therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be a guarantee to all the seed, not only to those of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. In other words, not only going to the, the, the Mosaic law, but he goes all the way back to Abraham, takes care of all that. Abraham was saved on credit. An accounting term. A credit means he was saved on credit. In other words, Jesus, uh, he had to pay the, pray, pay the debt because the debt was owed until Jesus died, went to hell, paid the price. Paid the debt in full. When he went there, when, when he got done in hell, he went over to the bosom of Abraham. Over to the bosom of Abraham because that's where everybody that died in the in the, uh, in, in the in the times of Abraham and then in the Mosaic Law, everybody died up until the New Testament. That includes the four Gospels up until the book of Acts. Everybody that died had to go and was born again through faith in, uh, in trusting the Word of God that the apostles had taught them and the men of God uh, taught them and the prophets had taught them. And so they were saved by sacrifices, turtle doves, animals, and so forth. And so when they were saved, 
on credit. All this is done on credit. And so when Jesus came, died, went to hell, paid the price, paid the debt, in hell, did cross over into the bosom of Abraham and snatched the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from Satan, went over to the bosom of Abraham and took all those that were saved through the Mosaic law and the Abrahamic law, or the Abrahamic covenant. Took them all, that's when he said, when he was lifted up, he took all those with him to heaven. Thank God for that this morning. I said, thank God for that this morning. Amen. And so he says here, in verse 17, as it is written, I made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who believe in God, God who gives life to the dead and call those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope, believed that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be and not being weak in faith, he did not consider, or he did consider, we take the knot out here, he did consider, he had to consider, because he was a human being. He had to consider what he was dealing with, what he was going through, but he did not, he did not waver, the Bible says in verse 20, but let's finish verse 19. Consider his own body already dead, since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb, which was about nothing. He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Strong in faith, giving glory to God. You've got to be strong in the Word of God so that you won't waver when you're standing on the promises of God. You're standing on His Word, believing His Word. you just got to continue to feed on that Word of God and see yourself like God sees you. See yourself like God sees you in the Word of God. Because we're all challenged. We're all challenged at one time or another. But when we're challenged, just stick with the word. Abraham, God says, Abraham, you're going to have a son. Didn't tell him when it was going to be. He was, he was uh, 75 years old. You're going to have a son out of your own loins through Sarah. Through Sarah. And then it says here that Abraham, for 25 years. Think about that. 25 years. 25 years. He believed, did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. What was he doing? Like we were doing this morning, praising God. Praising God. This is not, uh, we don't praise God just because it's a service to praise Him. We don't come in and praise Him just because we got the singers and the band, as wonderful as they are. What are you going to do tonight when you don't have the singers and the band? What are you going to do tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock when you get up and when you ain't got no singers and band there with you? We're going to praise him anyway. Give him all the glory. Give him all. Praise him. Praise. See, the enemy don't like you praising God. He doesn't want you praising God. You're going through something. You get up every day and say, I just prayed. I know my God through Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus lives inside of me by the Holy Spirit of God, and I know the promises will come to pass. I have a guarantee. I have a guarantee. you got to start, start saying out of your mouth, you have a guarantee. Don't do like some people say, well, I sure hope this works. I, I hope this, this comes to pass. You can't do that. you got to know. you got to have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Trusting his word, believing his word. As I said a few moments ago, this is not about religion. This is not about just being a member of a church. This is not about being baptized in water. It's about really identifying with who you really are in Christ Jesus. And Paul, when he was a sinner on the road of Damascus, he was headed to take uh, more Christians' lives and incarcerate or throw more uh, the Christians into prison, when he was on the road to Damascus, the Holy Ghost showed up on him in a light, knocked him off of his donkey, knocked him off, changed his whole life. He was Saul at the time. Then God changed his name, and now he became Paul. When he got knocked off of his donkey, knocked the, knocked the S off of his name, God put a P there. Uh, I see some folks need some, need some donkey experiences. 
need, need, need to get knocked off of their pride and, and knocked off of their religious horse. Get knocked off of their religious ideas. Uh, you, get, you need to get knocked off of some, some natural things and, 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 and get Jesus and get the power of the Holy Ghost working in your life and, as long as you're, you're galloping on that road of religion. You're going to keep galloping and just keep galloping. Just, I'm just galloping along. I don't want just galloping along. I, just like I said this morning in class and in, in uh, ministry, of, of, of a leadership class there. Uh, I said, I don't want to be just normal. I don't want to be normal. I'm not here to be normal. Jesus wasn't normal. I mean, it's not normal to walk on water. It's not normal to open up blind eyes. It's not normal to raise the dead. It's not normal. <laughs> it's not normal to praise God when you don't feel like praising God. That's not normal. It's not normal to come to church when you don't feel like it. That's right. Amen. I don't want to be a normal person. I want to be extraordinary. Yes. Amen. Amen. For Jesus. And you got the blood of Jesus inside. You can't be normal. You can't be average. We're just not average Christians, you know. I'm just not the average person, praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to be extra. Above. We, because we're not right, riding that, uh, that, that donkey of religion and, and theories and patterns after other people. Amen. I'm going to get on a different kind of horse. Horse of glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'll get off of that stuff. And, and when Paul, when Saul was knocked off that horse, that, that donkey, and he became, uh, he became Paul, I mean, everything changed for him. Everything changed to him. Glory, he was blinded at first. Okay. Sometimes, you know, we have, to, we have to be blinded. You know, people are blinded when they first get born again. They're blinded to who they really are in Christ. They, they can't really see who they are in Christ. Why? Because they really haven't gotten into the Word of God. And, and we can't keep feeding our minds and, and our thought life with doubt and unbelief and poverty ideas. And, and oh, oh, bless God, uh, God getting glory out of me being sick. Or God's getting glory out of me not having anything. I don't know what God you serve, but the God I serve is not a God about poverty. He's a God of health and prosperity. That's the kind of God I serve today. <laughs> and Paul, when he got into Christ, and, and, and I almost he said, hey, it ain't about me no more. It's not I that live. But the life that I'm now living, I'm now living this life by faith in the Son of God. Hallelujah. This is not about us. It's about him. And we're not normal anymore. We're different, praise God. That's never so quick trying to be normal when you get around normal people. You don't, you don't, you don't need to be normal around normal people. You, you need to be who you are in Christ. Uh, and they're going to look at you and think you might be nuts or whatever. That's all right. I'm not normal like you are. I, I got something to be excited about. Uh, I got something to praise God about. Uh, I got something to run about. Uh, I got something to shout about. Uh, praise God. He's a healer. Amen. I say, amen. It's not normal to be normal. I mean, it's normal to be normal, but it's not normal for you to be normal <laughs> when you're not normal. Don't, don't ask me to say that again. It's not normal. It's, I mean, it's normal to be normal when you're normal. But it's not normal for you to be normal when you're not normal. <laughs> Quit trying to fit into your society. Quit trying to fit in and be like, if you want to be like somebody, let's just be like Jesus. Come on, anybody want to be like Jesus is one. Let, let's just be like Jesus, praise God. Let's fit into Him, praise God. In Him I live and move and have my being. It's in Him. It's, it's in him I recognize who I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Dad Hagen said five doctors. Dad Hagen said five doctors, and he's a teenage boy, gave up on him. Told him, son, just go in and prepare to die. Five doctors. Told Brother Hagen, 15, 16-year-old boy. Said, nothing we can do for you. Nothing nobody can do for you. 
just make yourself as comfortable as you can. Told his, told his family, make, make him just as comfortable as you can because there's nothing we can do. He, he's just preparing to die. I ain't preparing to die, I'm preparing to live. Amen. Whose report shall you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Start taking authority right now in Jesus' name. Speak to yourself. Say, self, you're not normal. You're full of the Holy Ghost. You talk in tongues. You lay hands on the sick. You cast out devils. <laughs> Why? Because of the power of the blood of Jesus Christ that lives on the inside of us. There's power, wonder working power. Wonder working power in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Abraham said, I didn't, I didn't waver. I didn't waver in promises of God. God told me when I was 75 years old. Now think about it now. He was 75, wife 65, and he knew she was in past the age of having bearing children. Matter of fact, she's never had any. And it's one thing to have children and then for God to say, you're going to have one more. And you might have a little hope there because you have had kids before. But when you never had any kids for 65 years, and then God tells Abraham, tell your wife, she's going to have another baby. I like to hear that conversation. I like to have been there and heard that conversation when uh, Abraham said, Sarah, honey, after dinner tonight, I got something to talk to you about. I really got something serious to talk to you about. You know, you're, you're a beautiful woman. God blessed me with you. But I got to talk to you about something. Just sit down. She said, I don't know, to, you know how women are. Tell me right now. I don't want to go. Tell me right now. I don't want to go sit down nowhere. Just tell me right now. You know how you ladies are. Abraham said, no, no, no. I want you to go sit down. Because he, he, he might not have said this, but he may have been thinking this. It's going to knock you off of your feet. <laughs> now, th this is my paraphrasing the whole scenario. Okay, you understand it, don't you? Somebody look at the Bible and say, where, where did they say that in there? <laughs> I've got to find it. I know. <laughs> Everyone says, Sarah, come on in here. Leave the dishes alone. I'll, I'll help you with them after. I, I need to talk to you. Just leave the dishes alone. This lamb you fixed tonight was really good. Come on here and sit down. Let's talk. Abraham sits her down. He said, honey, I got some good news. I got some good news. God told me you're going to have a child. What? <laughs> but the Bible did say she, she started laughing. Matter of fact, it also said Abraham laughed. They both laughed. And that was kind of funny. You tell a 65-year-old woman, you don't have a baby, never had one before? That'd make me laugh. Make you laugh. Amen. If I went to my wife this afternoon and said, Honey, the Lord told me to tell you, the Lord told me to tell you, you're going to have a baby. <laughs> she, said, she said she wouldn't laugh, she'd cry. She'd be hysterical. <laughs> Don't ever count God short there, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's according to my faith. I don't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They both laugh. Laughter. But I think it was kind of a, a doubt laugh. But I looked at that, and then he says in, in Romans, the fourth chapter, Abraham never doubted. So he laughed. Maybe he was laughing because Sarah was laughing. I didn't know. I don't know really the deep meaning of that. All I know is they had a baby. I said they had a baby. Amen. He, I didn't waver in the promises of God. So what I'm going to get to is one, understanding the blood covenant. It's a guarantee. It's been sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. This word is a guarantee. This word here is all blood. I said, this is all, this is a blood book. It's a blood book. Amen. The blood of Jesus will never fail. Thank God for his promises. 
Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ will never fail. God's good. Amen. He says here, and being fully convinced. Oh, that's what we got to get to. I'm just fully convinced. Fully convinced. Even when you are fully convinced, even when you're fully convinced, negative thoughts will come. And because you think something that won't work, don't mean it won't work, just don't let that drop down into your heart. Because, see, the devil will say, "Uh uh-huh, see there, you don't really believe. See what you're thinking, you don't really believe. You say, yeah, but I rebuke that thought. So you got to do some talking, chatter. You got to do some chattering in faith. The enemy comes in you, comes at you like a flood. He comes, he comes at you like a flood. But thank God for the blood. I said, thank God. The enemy comes in our minds, every single one of us. He fights our minds, fights us hard. But thank God for the blood. I said, thank God for the blood. Stand with me this morning. Somebody say, thank God for the blood. He says, of being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. And in verse 24 says, but also for us, it shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, believing in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Stay strong. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, stay strong in the Holy Ghost. Stay strong in the Holy Ghost. There's power in the blood of the Lamb. Grab your neighbor's hand right now. Would you do that? Just, just grab your neighbor's hand. And, and I just feel like that we pray. The Bible says pray one for another that you be healed. And I'm going to pray a prayer as you pray and agree with a person's hand that you're holding. Holding that hand. The hand that you're holding right now, they may have had one of the worst weeks they've ever had. They may have one of the tough challenges that they've ever faced. They may have had a lot of stuff just dumped on them this past week, just dumped on them, right? Seemed like from nowhere. Seemed like maybe you've been going along, you know, and shouting, praising God, having a great time, worshiping God, all of a sudden, boom. Seemed like your world just fell apart for just an hour or two or a day or two. But I'm here to tell you, the Holy Ghost is our comforter. He's our strengthener. And we love you and we're praying for each other this morning. Father God, we lift up the wonderful name of Jesus. We bind the force of hell to try to come against your people this week, Father. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. We stand on the promises of God. Lord, you said ask anything in your name, believing when we pray, and we shall receive. And Father, we stand on what we have prayed for this week. Lord, even last night, even the prayer that you prayed this morning early. Oh, you said, God, God, I thank you. Lord, I pray. You cried out to God. You cried out to God. Like Bar- blind Bartimaeus. You cried out to God. Oh, but let there be the cry of faith, knowing that you don't have to put up with this any longer. You don't have to be that way no longer. You don't have to go through this any longer. That you're free. You're free in the wonderful name of Jesus. You're free. El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough, has made you free in Him. Thank God this morning. You've been set free. You've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. Now raise your hands and thank God you've been set free. Let that stuff just drop off of you right now. Let that stuff just drop off of you. Let it just drop off of you. I just had a glimpse, glimpse of, of, of just bags of junk just falling off of you. I just saw it falling off of you. I mean, it just, it just, it was just hanging, it just hanging on you. Like you had your hand on a, on a, on a strap, a little rope or something. And there was a bag on your back. You were hanging on to it. Just, just open your hand like this. Just open it up. There you go. You drop that stuff off of you right now. Hallelujah. You just drop it off of you right now. You'll feel lighter already. Hallelujah. 
Shandari Bikando Rabasandia. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, I've let go. I'll not grab that bag again in Jesus' name. I'm free and I'm light. I'm not carrying that heavy burden any further. It's gone in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood is too precious for you to carry around the cares of this life. The Word of God says, cast the whole of your care, James 4, cast the whole of your care on the Lord because He cares for you. Just cast it. You release that this morning. You've let it go this morning. You've let it go. So I shout, I've let it go. It's over. And I'm not going to pick it up again. Shout out loud. I'm not going to pick it up again. In Jesus' name. How many is born again this morning? Well, raise your hands. I thank God. I'm born again by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus lives in me. I'm a new creature. I'm a new species in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, take your hand down. If you could not raise your hand, to those watching live on stream right now, we want to pray for you right now. Pray for you right now. Don't leave this building without having Jesus in your life. Or maybe if you never had Christ, and you want to be born again, or if you have had Christ and you're backslidden, we want to pray for both situations right now. Raise your hand right now. Say, Pastor, remember me in this prayer. I want to get things right with God. Anyone, anywhere. Anyone, anywhere. Anyone, anywhere. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Raise that hand high. Raise it up high. God bless you, young man. Anyone else? Take your hand down. Anyone else? Say, I want to get rid of that mess. I want to get rid of that stuff I've been going through. I've known God one time. Now I've gone astray. I've just got so many issues I'm dealing with. I just, I'm going to get rid of it right now. Young man, come on down here. Let me pray for you. Come on down here. Praise God. Someone else. Someone else. Come on down here. Come on down here right now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hey, young man. Are you, what's your name? Alfonso. Alfonso. Alfonso? Praise God. Have you ever been born again? Be your first time. Hey. Hey. Praise the Lord. How about you, young man? You ever been born again? Never? Hey, what's your name? Jeff. Jeff? Jeff? Has never been born again? Alfonso has never been born again? What's your name, sir? Brian. You've been born again before, haven't you? Yes, I have. You were... Join the church. Oh, you come over here to join the church. Well, praise the Lord. That's good. Amen. Amen. Hey, sweetheart. Hi. That's you. Praise the Lord. Now, we've got two groups up here. Are right, you going to go ahead and take care of this group right here? Kathy? Which group? Which group, group we got here? Kathy? These people want to join the church. All right, take care of them. Give them a big hand. Now, we have Alfonso, Jeff, come to receive Jesus for the very first time. Now, I know you've been going through some crazy, crazy things. Crazy things. I mean, some real crazy things. The devil's tried to take you out several times, but he couldn't do it. God's got a purpose for your life. Both of you. Got a purpose for you. You're not here by mistake. Now I'm going to pray. The Bible says, pray believing. And I'm going to pray, and we're going to believe. Now, you don't have to feel anything. The Bible says, that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Praise God. So I want you to pray with me right now. I'm going to church. Church, pray with me. Say, say Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I ask you now, I ask you now in Jesus' name, Jesus name, forgive me of my sins. Me of my sins. And my sin. And my sin. I believe in my heart. That Jesus Christ, Jesus 
died for me. And on the third day, he arose from the grave. I now receive Christ. I am born again. I'm a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things are new. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now let me say this now. I don't have time to do a whole lot of teaching right here, but that's why you need to keep coming to church so you can learn how to overcome tests and trials when they come. Now, you see right up here, you can get saved. But from here down, you get born again. So you're still going to think and, and the enemy still wants you to act the way you used to act and talk the way you used to talk because you're, you haven't got your mind renewed yet. Or Romans 12 uh, two says this, be not conformed or shaped or molded like the world, world, but be you transformed. How can you be transformed? By the renewing of your mind. So you got to get your mind renewed now. I know this may be deep for you or whatever, but if you keep coming, we got people here that love you. You'll learn from the Word of God, and we want to be your pastors and love you through all this. And, and we're here for you, and uh, we're going to help you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right. God bless you, Alfonso. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's good. My mom's taking care of me for a minute now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Love you guys. Go with this young man right here. Praise God. Come on, church. Hallelujah. The devil's mad. The devil's mad. Hallelujah. They, they may not, they, they don't know that right now, but they'll never be the same again. Never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Some of you men need to get a hold of them and mentor them. We've got some men here that love God, knows the Word of God, know who you are in Christ Jesus. Now, I don't have time to do it, mentor everybody individually. That's why you come here to church together. So you know who they are? Alfonso is one of them, and Jeff is the other one. Bless you. Hallelujah. Even more than you've already been blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Love you. Praise God. Have a wonderful, blessed day.